If you haven't read hundreds of books, you are functionally illiterate and you will be incompetent because your personal experiences alone aren't broad enough to, to sustain you. General Jim Mattis. Here's a battle plan. We're going to do a quick emergency procedure. We'll address this week's questions. We'll get into the fundamentals of flight and we'll do a quick Q&A. If you have any questions, go ahead and DM me. Uh, this week we are doing a pre-recorded lesson. Okay. So let's say we are flying along and we lose our vacuum system. What instruments do you expect to lose? Well, first of all, the vacuum system, we're going to see our vacuum gauge indicate, uh, you know, a loss of vacuum. Uh, vacuum. Uh, we're going to lose our attitude indicator and our heading indicator because these are both vacuum driven gyroscopic instruments. Now, what happens if we lose our electrical system? What instrument can you expect to lose? That'll be the turn coordinator. That is an electrically driven gyroscope. Now, what happens if your pitot tube becomes clogged with ice in flight? The pitot tube is part of the pitot-static system, which includes the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the vertical speed indicator. So if your pitot tube becomes blocked, all it's going to do is, uh, is gonna, you're going to lose your airspeed indicator because the pitot tube provides ram air for the airspeed indicator. <clears throat> Last one. Let's say we're flying along and we experience an engine failure. What are the steps you take for an engine failure? Go. That'll be the A, B, C's of an engine failure. A, airspeed, pitch for your best glide speed. In this aircraft, it's 65 knots. B, find your best place to land. It might be behind you. And then C, pull out your checklist and start working the problem. All right, so today we're gonna cover the fundamentals of flight. Straight and level flight, level turns, straight climbs and climbing turns, and then straight descents and descending turns. Again, if you have any questions, go ahead and DM me either on Discord or through the website, or if you're on YouTube, go ahead and just pop it in the uh, comments. Let's get into straight and level flight. What is it? A flight in which a constant heading and attitude, altitude are maintained. This is accomplished by making immediate and measured corrections for deviations in direction and altitude from slight unintentional turns, descents, and climbs. Why do we care? It is impossible to emphasize too strongly the necessity for performing a correct habits in flying straight and level. All other flight maneuvers are in essence a deviation from this flight maneuver. Your, if, if you find a, a pilot uh, who struggles to perform uh, other maneuvers, it's usually because they haven't mastered straight and level flight. So we're going to cover flight controls, pressures, trim technique, integrated flight instruction, and flying straight and level. Let's talk about the flight controls. So our aircraft is a three-dimensional aircraft, right? We operate in three dimensions. We have the vertical axis, vertical. We have the longitudinal axis and we have the lateral axis. Now, if we draw an airplane, we've got the wings here, uh, the nose and the tail, right? When we rotate or when we move the controls, we are going to be um, manipulating our flight controls. So if we roll the stick left and right, we're going to uh, actuate the ailerons and they're going to rotate about the longitudinal axis. If we actuate the stick forward and aft, we're going to be using the elevators and we're going to uh, pitch about the lateral axis, pitch up, uh, nose up and nose down. And if we actuate the rudder pedals and uh, push on the rudder, we're going to yaw about the vertical axis, right? Now, anytime we are flying, we always be very, very um, light on the controls. We're always very gentle when we fly, right? Uh, you never want to be muscling the controls. So everything is done with, you know, two fingers on the yoke, uh, very light touch on the throttle. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about the tail here. There's the rudder, this is the elevator, and this is the trim tab. Right, so if we have the stick up here at the front of the aircraft, and we bring the stick aft toward our chest, the elevator is going to come up like this, and the wind is going to deflect, is going to hit that, and it's going to deflect the tail downward and that's gonna pitch our nose up. So we pull back on the stick, and that gives us a nose up attitude. Now if we push forward on the stick, again, very gently, we're gonna move the elevator down like this. The wind is gonna strike here at the bottom. It's going to bring the tail up, and it's gonna bring the nose of the aircraft down. So pitch, uh, if we wanna pitch down, we're gonna push forward on the control yoke or control stick, right? Now if we look at the aircraft from behind as though we were flying it. So this is us here uh, in the aircraft and we are, we've got the stick and we want to roll the aircraft left to right. We're going to move the stick. Let's say we want to move to the right. We're going to move the stick to the right 
and the roll, the wings are going to roll to the right. And the way that's going to work is one, one aileron is going to come up, the other aileron is going to go down, right? Now the aileron that's going up like this, the air is going to strike it here and it's going to bring this, uh, it's going to reduce the camber and it's going to reduce the lift generated by this wing, bringing this wing down. And this wing is going to have an aileron coming down, the wind is going to strike it, it's going to change the camber again of the wing and generate more lift and this wing is going to go up. So in essence what we're doing is we're changing the lift each wing produces. One wing is producing more lift than the other causing it to roll. Now we've talked about this before. A byproduct of lift is drag. So if you have a, a regular wing and is creating lift, it's going to have a bit of drag as well. And when you're flying straight and level, both wings are generating the same amount of lift and therefore the same amount of drag. But what happens when you have one wing generating more lift than the other? Of course, that wing is going to generate more drag. So this wing is going to drag behind and this one's not going to have as much drag. So it's going to, you know, come forward or basically we're going to have a yawing motion in the wrong direction. We're going to be rolling to the right, but the wing is going to get dragged to the left. So your nose is going to get dragged to the left. That is something called adverse yaw. And we have to control that using our rudder. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to use coordinated rudder pressures with our ailerons to keep our nose uh, from yawing left or right in a turn. And that's what the rudder is for, to control for that adverse yaw. A lot of people think that it's there to turn the aircraft, but it's not. All right, so let's move on down here. So let's talk about those control pressures. Like I said before, we're never muscling the controls. Uh, we're always gonna be very gentle. So if this is our control yoke, we're not gonna be white knuckling it. We're going to use two fingers. You're, you're gonna pinch it with your thumb and four, uh, forefinger and keep the other fingers off like that, right? Nice and light on the controls. In fact, I've heard of the pencil technique. I think it's where you put a pencil between your fingers here and you just very lightly touch the controls, right? And the way we uh, keep the controls so light is by using that trim tab, right? So we roll it forward if we want pitch down, roll it back if we want pitch up. So we're going to relieve the control pressures using the trim tab so that we can fly hands off and use very light control pressures, right? Uh, yeah, we talked about that trim technique. Use trim. Anytime you're changing the attitude of the aircraft, you should re-trim, right? Uh, we're going straight and level. Pitch, you set your pitch, uh, you set your power, and then you trim it off. Okay. And moving on, I think that's good. Right, so integrated flight instruction refers to this. In VFR world, which is where we are right now, 90% of your time should be spent looking outside of the aircraft for, uh, for traffic or um, terrain, uh, mountains, or buildings, right? Most of our time should be spent up and outside of the cockpit, uh, avoiding other traffic and avoiding the terrain. And then 10% of your time should be back inside the cockpit, confirming what you think is happening outside with what you see on your instruments. Okay. Now, when we're flying straight and level, we're going to use the cowling or the dash and find the horizon and basically keep this distance fixed, right? It should be pretty obvious whether we are turning or straight and level. Okay. When we look to the left and to the right, our wings should be pretty much the same distance from the horizon. And again, 90% of that time should be outside looking at the, uh, the horizon or looking out for other traffic. That 10% of the time when we're looking inside, we want to confirm with our instruments. Now, obviously the attitude indicator is a pitch instrument. We look at this guy and say, okay, our wings are level, our nose is with the horizon, and we're not turning. Great. But you know, the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the vertical speed indicator are also pitch in instruments. If our nose is high, let's draw an airplane here. If our nose is high, we're going to lose a lot of airspeed actually, and our airspeed indicator will indicate a uh, loss of airspeed. If our nose is low, then the airspeed indicator is actually going to accelerate. We're going to gain airspeed, and it's going to you know, look like we're accelerating. So this can help us uh, determine whether or not we're straight and level. Also, if we're nose high, the altimeter is likely going to increase, and we're going to see an increase in our altitude. And our VSI will also indicate a climb or a descent if our nose is high or low. Now, for our wings, if we want to maintain level flight, and not be in a bank or a turn. 
We're going to look at these three instruments. We have the turn coordinator. If our wings are level, we're good. If we're coordinated, great. Our heading should be constant. We should select a heading and then fly it. And then, again, our altitude will tell us if we are uh, climbing or descending. All right, and again, we're pre-recording this, so if you have questions, go ahead and post them in the, uh, in the comments or send me a direct question through Discord or through the website. Let's talk about turns now. What is a turn? A turn at a specified angle of bank at which altitude and airspeed are maintained. We're going to talk about how we turn the aircraft and why we care. Uh, the ability to understand and fly a level turn is essential to the building of every pilot's skill set. Level turns are the building blocks to many more difficult maneuvers and will help the pilot in their control of the airplane. We're going to talk about flight controls, how it works, the control pressures, trim technique, integrated flight instruction, and flying a level turn. Now, what are the four flight controls? Well, we've got the ailerons that turn or change the lift. We've got the elevator and we've got the rudder, and we've got the engine as well. We're gonna use the engine. Now this is how a plane turns. Generally speaking, well pretty much always when we're in a straight and level flight, we have lift in one direction. It is purely vertical, and we've got weight that weighs us down. When we roll the wings, and we change the, uh, the lift uh, each wing is producing, we're gonna change the, the total lift vector and now this is our total lift vector. We have a vertical component that continues to fight weight. And now we have a horizontal component of lift. And it's this horizontal component of lift that's going to turn the aircraft. Now remember, uh, anytime we're changing the amount of lift each wing is doing, uh, there's a good chance we're going to change, change the amount of drag each wing is, doing, is uh, providing. Uh, so we're going to have to use coordinated rudder pressure to uh, execute a coordinated turn. Yeah, here we go, like we talked about before, this is adverse yaw. One wing is generating more lift, and that's gonna create a, a more drag on that wing than the lowered wing, and that's gonna cause adverse yaw in the opposite direction of our turn. Now, there's something else we gotta think about. There's the overbanking tendency of the aircraft. Let me scooch down here to my notes, there we go. Now, as the radius of the turn becomes smaller, a significant uh, difference develops between the speed of one wing and the other, right? Uh, the, and this is going to cause the aircraft to overbank, right? And so we have to be aware of that. And at some times, we'll actually have to reduce the control inputs that we're putting in and sometimes even put in opposite controls to keep the aircraft from overbanking. It doesn't really happen so much in, uh, in really uh, shallow turns, but in very steep turns, 45 degrees or more, you're more likely to uh, see that overbanking tendency. <clears throat> Now the rate of a turn uh, is dependent on airspeed and horizontal component of lift, right? Uh, so if you are going really, really fast, it's gonna take you longer to execute a turn, whereas if you're going pretty relatively slow, you can make a turn a lot sharper. Similarly, if you are flying at the same airspeed and you have a greater angle of bank, you're gonna turn faster than if you have a very shallow angle of bank. So if you wanna turn tight, slow down and uh, turn more aggressively. Uh, but if you want to take it slower, you can actually be faster. Uh, your airspeed can be faster and you can actually enter a more shallow turn. Remember, we always want to be coordinated. So uh, if you see this ball, leave its little cage, step on the ball, right? Now control pressures. Like we said before, everything's really, really light, very light on the controls. When you roll into the turn, very lightly, uh, put your control pressures in. Make sure to put on you know, rudder, pre uh, rudder pressure. If, um, and, and remember, as we lose vertical lift, there's a good chance that we're gonna actually going to need to add some power or some nose up attitude to compensate for this loss of vertical lift. So something else to keep in mind. Always very light. And don't forget trim, right? Uh, especially on steep turns. When we enter a steep turn, if we're flying straight and level, we're going to be trimmed for straight and level flight. And we turn into a very steep turn like this, we're going to need to put in some rudder, uh, not some rudder, oh yeah, rudder, but also some trim <laughs> to uh, help us relieve that, uh, that extra control pressure. So uh, pitch power, trim, and then um, maintain coordination, right? And like before, we want to, this is our airplane here, we want to look outside of the aircraft 90% of the time 
and uh, and not fixate on our instruments. So most of your time should be outside, looking up, out, uh, you know, watching for traffic or mountains or houses, uh, and then 10% of your time should be you know verifying with our instruments. And again, uh, each of these we're going to tell you something different, uh, and they're going to give you a broad picture of what's happening in the aircraft. So 90% outside, 10% inside. <clears throat> I think I've got it there. There we go. So as we enter the turn, uh, this, so before we are straight and level, this should be parallel with the horizon, right? But as we enter the turn, we're going to get an angle here. This, is, this should be your reference angle. Uh, and if you're trying to do a steep turn, we want to keep, uh, keep our nose basically level with the horizon to maintain our altitude. Recognize that if we are in an aircraft that has side-by-side -side seating rather than, you know, front and, front and back seating, uh, Every, a, a turn to the left is going to look different uh, from a turn to the right. So your roll axis is over here. That's where your nose is. Uh, so when you turn to the left, it's going to look wider than when you turn to the right. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then as you enter your turn, control uh, your control pressure should be very light. Uh, you should be coordinated using rudder pressure and then trim off the extra pressures that you need to pull back on the, uh, on the yoke. Now, in the turn, we want to be looking up and outside of the aircraft, uh, being very light on the controls, uh, again, like I said, and then cross-check with your instruments and adjust accordingly. If you are you know, losing altitude, maybe ro uh, release some of that pressure or bring some uh, nose-up pressure or add a little bit of power, uh, and then check with your instruments, again, 90% outside and then 10% inside of the aircraft. Now, as you roll out of the turn, we're going to lead the, uh, the rollout by half of the bank angle. What does that mean? We're going to, let's say if we are at a 30 degree, 30 degree angle of bank like this, and we are coming up on our heading uh, that we want, we're going to lead this by half of this angle. So 15 degrees away from the heading that we want, we're gonna put in opposite control pressures that we put into the roll. Uh, and again, using that rudder and aileron to keep that coordinated turn uh, and roll our wings level. And that should give us uh, a perfect rollout angle to roll out straight and level where we want it, right? Now, as we come back to straight and level, our lift vector is gonna go back to being completely vertical. So there's a good chance your aircraft's gonna wanna climb. So anticipate that, either adding a little bit of nose down pressure or retrimming for uh, you know, that extra trim that you put in. Uh, so establish straight and level flight with visual references and then trim for straight and level flight. Okay, cool. Questions, post them in the comments or send them to me on uh, in Discord. Let's talk about straight climbs and climbing turns. Uh, now, the airplane is put into a climb attitude in order to gain altitude and we're gonna manage pitch and airspeed together to accomplish the climb. We're gonna talk, uh, talk about flight controls, the forces in a climb, types of climbs, control pressures, trim technique, integrated flight instruction, straight climb, and climbing turns, and how they are different, right? Now, whenever we are, basically anytime we're flying, we're gonna do, we're gonna use all four of our controls, right? All four primary controls are used in the coordination when making a turn, climbing, descending, anytime we're flying, it's all coordinated together. Now the ailerons bank the wings, they're gonna determine our rate of turn and bank angle. The elevator moves the nose up or down, like we talked about before, right? If the elevator is up, it's gonna bring the nose, or the correction, the tail down, it's gonna bring the nose of the aircraft up, right? Um, and then uh, this will actually help us establish our climb. So we pull back on the yoke or on the stick, the elevator comes up and the wind strikes it and we're gonna drop that no or drop the tail and it's gonna raise our nose and it's gonna establish that climb attitude, right? The rudder yaws the aircraft left or right. Let me draw my airplane here. Right, it yaws us left or right, and we're going to use coordinated rudder pressure uh, to maintain coordination. And then throttle is going to provide that extra thrust we need to maintain airspeed during the climb and during the turn. Now let's talk about the forces in a climb. Right, as we Enter our control inputs, back pressure on the stick, power you know, in, retrim. Uh, the angle of attack is gonna change and it's gonna you know, generate more lift, right? So we're gonna you know, overcome that weight that we're fighting. 
in a climb, the weight acts rearward now. So instead of being you know, perpendicular to our lift, now it's gonna be you know, straight down, as it always is, but it's actually gonna add to our drag. It's gonna, weight acts rearward to the flight path, right? So if this effectively increases our drag, requiring an increase in thrust. A climb can only be sustained if there's sufficient thrust to offset the increased drag, and climbs are therefore limited by excess thrust. And there's also the P factor, or uh, propeller effects of the, uh, of the aircraft. So the airspeed's slower and the angle of attack is higher than in, a cru in cruise flight, and so torque and asymmetric loading results in left roll and yaw. Uh, so we have to anticipate that and coordinate with, uh, with rudder. What that means is, as we increase that angle, one propeller, one side of the propeller, is gonna take a bigger chunk of air than the other, and it's gonna create asymmetric thrust. So if we're looking dead on at our aircraft here, uh, what a terribly drawn airplane. There we go. This side of the propeller is gonna take a bigger chunk of air than this one. It's gonna create more thrust on this side of the aircraft than this one, and that's gonna create that yawing, and we're gonna to have to account for that using rudder pressure. What a, it looks like a, like a pig, a piggy airplane. Oh my God. All right, let's talk about some types of climb. There's a normal climb, which is a cruise climb, and this is uh, executed by the airspeed published by the manufacturer. It's typically faster than the best rate or angle of climb, but it provides better airspeed, cooling, and control and visibility. So we're not going to be, you know, full throttle, nose, you know, hanging on the, on, uh, in the air for a normal cruise climb. We want a very calm and gentle climb. Now, opposed to a best rate of climb, this is usually like right after we depart, uh, this is going to give us the most altitude gain for the shortest amount of time. So VY, best rate of climb. This is uh, the airspeed where the most excess power is available. Then there's the best angle of climb. Uh, this is the, al the most altitude gained over the shortest distance. So this is like if you have a tree that you need to get over or a building, you would pitch for the best angle of climb. This is slower than VY, but you're gonna get to altitude in a shorter distance, right? This is where the airspeed, this is the airspeed where the most excess thrust is available. Again, control pressure should be very smooth, very light, no jerky movements. Uh, and you can tell when a pilot is over controlling when they are jolty or uh, when they're white knuckling it, right? Or, or if they just appear nervous. So the best way to prevent over controlling is to recognize it, wiggle your fingers and toes, take a deep breath, relax, and fly with your fingertips, right? Deep breath. And remember that pencil technique. Nice and light, right? There we go. Now let's talk about trim. Like in every other maneuver we do, we're gonna put in pitch power and then trim off the excess control pressures. Uh, so set uh, your pitch, your bank, and power and let your airspeed stabilize first and then trim to relieve those control pressures, right? And then uh, double check with your instruments, verify your desired performance, always look outside the aircraft, 90% of that time is outside, and then 10% inside. If you need to adjust, uh, you can reestablish your desired performance, retrim. Uh, remember that Anytime you change pitch power or other conditions, you're going to have to retrim, right? And uh, there's no situation where you're going to have, you can set trim once and then just leave it. You're going to have to be retrimming throughout the flight for, you know, wind or, uh, you know, as your fuel burns, you're actually going to change the uh, weight and balance of the aircraft. So you're going to have to retrim throughout the flight. Now remember, like we said, 90% outside, 10% inside. Use outside references to fly. Don't rely on your instruments until you get to the instrument uh, rating. Okay, uh, when correction is necessary, apply it in reference to the natural horizon and then double check with your instruments and then trim, of course, as we always do. Now let's talk about straight climbs. Entering a straight climb, uh, you wanna simultaneously establish your pitch attitude and power setting for the climb. So put your nose where you want it, right? Set your power where you want it. And then once your airspeed has stabilized, trim off that pressure, okay? Uh, you always wanna maintain coordination with the rudder and then, again, trim to relieve control pressures. Now, as you climb, you should be trimmed so you can let go of the controls and the aircraft will continue on uh, the climb, right? Uh, your power is constant, airspeed is controlled with elevator pressure, so when we pitch up, we're gonna slow the aircraft down, when we pitch down, we're gonna accelerate, we're gonna increase our airspeed, and then we're gonna maintain our ailerons level to keep, uh, you know, to maintain our heading. 
Now, when we return to straight and level flight, just like we let off our bank or our turn by half the bank angle, we're going to do 10%. We're going to lead our level off by 10% of the rate of climb. So if we're climbing at 500 feet per minute uh, on the VSI, we're going to level off 50 feet before the desired altitude. And we're going to do it very smoothly like we did before. Uh, smoothly and slowly lower the nose to level flight attitude. Put your nose on the horizon. Set your power. Allow your aircraft to, uh, to accelerate or the airspeed to settle. And then trim it off. And then confirm with your instruments and make any adjustments that you need. Now, it's going to be a little different when we're doing a climbing turn than we're doing a straight turn. Because now we've got... Uh, you know, we're doing several different things all at once. Before, we're just, you know, worrying about increasing the thrust and the pitch angle to get our nose up and climb the aircraft. Now we're also trying to do a climbing turn at the same time. So we're going to lose some of that lift. We'll have to adjust for that. So add power, roll into the uh, turn. Of course, we're going to trim it off. Uh, so your turning tendency, your turning reduces vertical lift, like I said. Therefore, you're going to need more back pressure than uh, during, a climbing, uh, during a climbing turn than during a straight turn. A shallower bank angle provides for more efficient rate of climb, and a medium steep bank turns can significantly degrade or eliminate your climb performance. So if you try to climb and turn like a 90 degree bank uh, turn and climb at the same time, you're going to quickly find that you don't have the ability to execute that. So keep that in mind, you know, uh, and don't forget adverse yaw is still a factor. Anytime we're changing the, um, the lift of each wing, you're going to have to uh, account for that adverse yaw. So uh, add some rotor pressure. Yeah, so in the left turn, less right rotor pressure is required than in a straight climb. And then in a right turn, more right rotor is uh, required than in a straight climb. Now entering a climb, you want to enter the climb first and then establish the bank or enter the climb and turn simultaneously. In either case, establish pitch and bank in relation to the natural horizon. That's right, 90% of your time should be outside the aircraft. So enter the turn uh, or enter the climb and then enter the turn but look outside and then confirm with your instruments. Maintain coordination. You should be developing that pilot feel, that seat of your pants feeling. If you are getting pulled to the inner, inside or outside of the, of the aircraft, then you know that you are not coordinated. You should be pulled straight down into, the, uh, into your seat. And then verify performance with the instruments. Trim. Always love trim. Maintaining a climbing turn. Your power is constant, so pitch is maintained in relation to the horizon, just like in a straight climb. Uh, your bank is maintained in relation to the angle of the cowling and the horizon, right? So if this is the horizon, you want to keep this angle constant, wh whether or not your nose high or nose low. And then cross-check with your instruments and make necessary adjustments. Trim often. Always trim. Now when we return, just like before, we're going to level off 10% of the rate of climb. So if we're climbing at 60, six, sorry, uh, 600 feet per minute on the VSI, we're going to level off by 60 feet. If we're enter, if we're in a uh, 15 degree angle of bank, 15 degrees with the horizon, that's you know close to 15 there. Uh, we're going to level off. We're going to anticipate that uh, rolling out of the turn by seven degrees or so, seven to eight degrees before we get to our heading, right? And of course, pitch, power, allow your aircraft to uh, settle and then trim it off. Let's talk about uh, straight descents and descending turns. A descent is made when the aircraft is put in a configuration will result in a loss of altitude. We're going to talk about flight controls, forces in a descent, types of descents, control pressures, trim, integrated flight instruction, straight descent, and turning descent. Descents are a fundamental part of a flight and a building block to many future maneuvers. Understanding and properly performing descents will result in other maneuvers becoming easier. Again, these are all just the basic flight maneuvers. Now we're going to use all four primary controls, again, coordinated to make a turn. Like we said before, your ailerons are going to do uh, the bank. Uh, they're going to determine your rate of turn and bank angle. The elevator moves that air, uh, the nose up and down. And the rudder, of course, yaws left and right. And then your throttle is going to reduce your thrust in order to maintain airspeed during your descent and turn. Now let's establish this descent. You're going to have a change in angle of attack and lift when the elevator is first applied. We're going to reduce power and put our nose where we want it. And then uh, there are two different ways you can do this, right? You can either uh, select a descent rate, so you know, 500 feet per minute rate of descent, or you can set a, um, a constant airspeed descent or a, combina or a combination of the two. 90 knots on the... Oh, no, 90 knots 
on the airspeed indicator and 500 feet per minute rate of descent is, is a pretty standard uh, descent rate. Um, so these two together will give you a pretty good descent, right? Uh, partial power descent. This is the normal method of losing altitude, so we're going to reduce power and your airspeed and power settings are recommended by the manufacturer. Good rule of thumb in a, in a Cessna is 90 knots, 500 feet per minute rate of descent. Right? Uh, you want you want to descend at a minimum safe airspeed. You don't want to be you know screaming down, uh, right at you know 2,000 feet per minute rate of descent. We want to be very. You want to keep our passengers comfortable, right? So, uh, nose high, power sense descent. Yeah. <laughs> then there's emergency sense. So emergency descents, these are, let's say, a pa passenger has a heart attack or uh, something is wrong with the aircraft and you need to get down to, the, um, down to the surface as quickly as possible. Your pilot operating handbook is going to have a checklist for how to perform this. In general, it's going to be a high drag, high airspeed procedure in a specific configuration. In general, check your POH. In general, you're going to be at you know, full flaps, uh, nose down, uh, again, trying to get down to the ground as fast as possible. Uh, I'm going to put my flaps in there, bam. All right, and then uh, you're going to go to your best glide when you get closer to the ground and execute a, uh, a landing. Now, your glide is a maneuver in which the airplane loses altitude in a controlled descent with little or no power. Uh, if, if any of you guys know Mitch Hedberg, I love one of his jokes. Uh, when an airplane loses an engine, it becomes a glider. Sorry for the convenience. All right, so we're going to pitch for our best glide speed, which in the 172 is 65 knots. And we're basically just going to trim it off, uh, what, whatever nose attitude gets you there, and you're just going to glide it in. It's really chill, very, very relaxed maneuver. Gliding is very, very, uh, very chill. Like we said before, your control pressure should be very calm, very gentle. There should be no jerky movements as you are uh, maneuvering. Uh, you can tell when a pilot is over-controlling, when he's jerky or aggressive, or he's got that white knuckle grip, right? Remember to recognize when you're not relaxed. Anytime we're in the plane, man, just relax. Take a minute to enjoy where you are and just love it, right? Relax. If you need to, put your pencil between your fingers and just super light pressures. This is something you should do, actually, when you're turning final. Recognize if you are uncomfortable or if you are too stressed, right? On final, relax. Your shoulders, breathe a little, it's gonna be all right. And then just transition into slow flight right over the runway. Like we said before, anytime we're changing the, uh, the aircraft's attitude, we're gonna re trim. So pitch, power, let the airspeed stabilize, and then trim. Trim to reveal, to, to reveal, to relieve the control pressures. Uh, so we're gonna, if you, if you feel like you've got a pullback on the stick, you know, uh, roll your trim tab or your trim wheel until you can actually let it go. Bring it back until you can actually let go and the, and the yoke or the stick stays right where you, have, where you left it. And like we said before, 90% of your time should be spent outside looking outside of the aircraft and then 10% should be inside, all right? Uh, if we need to adjust, we can reestablish the desired performance and then re-trim, always be trimming, right? And we've covered that already. And we said that already, 90% out, outside, 10% inside. Yeah. Basically, anytime you're making any corrections, make it in reference to the horizon, pitch, power, let your airspeed settle, trim it off, and then confirm with your instruments. Right? Now, when we enter a straight descent, uh, we're going to gently decrease our power with our throttle and then maintain altitude to slow it to descend speed. Right? And then slowly increase back pressure as airspeed reduces. So we're going to, again, it's all coordinated. Power, what airspeed you want, uh, and then trim it off, and then let the aircraft do its thing, right? And then, of course, always double check with your instruments, right? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Maintaining a straight descent. Since power is fixed, airspeed is controlled by pitch, just like we said before. Nose up to reduce our airspeed, nose down to increase our airspeed. Keep the wings level to maintain straight flight. Uh, if, if you need it, add some rotor pressure. And then again, 90% outside, 10% inside. Now, just like a climb, we're going to level off, uh, we're going to lead the level off by 10% of our descent rate. And we're going to smoothly increase power to the cruise power setting and gently raise the nose. So, again, if we are descending at, you know, 495 feet per minute, just to be different, right, we're going to lead off that, uh, that level off by 49 feet. 49 feet. Add power, set your nose, let your airspeed uh, settle, and then uh, trim it off. 
Now, uh, a descending turn, right? Like Just like a climbing turn, we're gonna enter the descent and then establish the bank, or enter the descent and turn at the same time. In either case, you're gonna reduce your power and maintain altitude as airspeed slows. Just prior to reaching the descent speed, you set your pitch and bank in relation to the horizon, and then use coordinated rudder and aileron during the rolling. As always, 90% of your time should be outside the aircraft, and then 10% should be double checking. Once you've established where you, where you want the aircraft or what you want it to do, trim it off. Use that trim tab, and then let go. You should, the aircraft should stabilize where you put it. All right. Your pitch adjustments are made in the same way as in a straight descent. You should divide your attention and use aileron pressures to maintain the desired bank angle. Be aware of that overbanking tendency. You might actually have to put in opposite uh, aileron pressure to keep it where you want it. Right? A change in bank often necessitates a change in pitch to maintain airspeed. Remember that you are changing not only the, the, the lift, you're also changing what, how much lift each wing is generating. And so be, uh, be ready for that adverse yaw. And like before, when we return to straight and level flight, we're gonna leave off the descent by 10% of the rate of climb or rate of descent, excuse me. And then uh, the heading change, we're gonna lead that by half of the bank angle. So if we are turning at 45 degrees or a, a bank angle of 45 degrees, we're going to cut that in half. What's that, 22 or so? We're gonna look at our HSI and 22 degrees away from our heading, we're gonna roll our wings back to level, right? Cool. Questions. Of course, if you have questions, what I'm doing. If you have questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. I would appreciate a like and a subscribe if you guys wouldn't mind. And then uh, send me questions through Discord or through the website. Keep studying, hit modules four through 401 through 403, quiz yourself on the Cessna uh, free quiz uh, website. And I would love to hear any feedback you have for me. Sorry again about today. Why are there two of these? Uh, I didn't realize today was Halloween, so I'm pre-recording this so you guys can have it. Um, yeah. Anyways, thanks again for joining me. Really appreciate it. I uh, hope to see you guys next week.